Murphy's Law and Whitetails, your guide to North America's number one big game animal. Today's topic is a relatively recently discovered source of mortality in whitetail deer, and that is the brain abscess. And as its name implies, a brain abscess is an infection of the deer's brain. It is caused by one of several types of naturally occurring bacteria that find its way into the brain or skull cavity of a whitetail. And it does so through the suture lines, the little squiggly lines on the skull, or through some other opening caused by breakage of the pedicle or some other injury sustained during fighting. And once the bacteria has made its way into the brain, it begins to multiply. And over time, the enzymes and bacteria begin to build pressure and pus within the brain itself, and the deer can die in a fairly quick fashion. However, if there is drainage occurring, they can survive in some cases for several months or even a couple of years, again, if that pressure can be alleviated through drainage. Now, once a deer becomes a you know, late stage brain abscess case, they're gonna lose their motor function and they're gonna walk in circles completely oblivious to humans and they're very, very unique in that behavior. So if you encounter a deer as I did, this particular buck a few years ago in Kentucky, uh, walking in circles completely oblivious to humans, this deer was dispatched legally and I was able to remove the, the tissue to determine that it was in fact a brain abscess that caused erosion of the pedicle and in fact, complete breakage and removal of the pedicle and the antler. And I can only imagine the last few hours of this deer's life must have been very painful. What's interesting about this disease though is it's not uniformly present throughout the whitetail's range. In fact, in the arid Southwest, Oklahoma and Texas and that part of the, the whitetail's range, disease is rare now. In much of the East, it is fairly widespread. However, there are some geographic hotspots and these hot spots appear to be linked directly to the original stalking source of deer for that particular area. At least that's the case in Georgia where researchers have actually looked at this. And in fact, they found a high prevalence of brain abscess in areas of Georgia that had been restocked with Wisconsin whitetails many years ago. However, when they looked in areas where Texas or other subspecies of whitetails were restocked, they found no evidence of this disease. So clearly, this disease came with these deer. And in fact, they went back years later to the area of Wisconsin where these deer came from and bingo, the bacteria was present within these herds. Now, what can we as hunters do about it? Not a great deal, except to understand that it may be an additive source of mortality for your deer herd. And again, pay attention to it. If you see drainage, pus drainage down the base of a deer's skull, particularly around the pedicle area, there's good evidence that in fact, this deer may have an active brain abscess. If you find dead deer on the landscape, take a chance to look inside the skull for pitting and erosion, uh, areas of breakage. Uh, pay attention to this because it, again, in some areas, it is an additive source of mortality, something you at least need to be aware of. That's it for today's episode of Murphy's Law. I hope you learned something. And until next time, be sure to leave your questions and your comments here in the video, but also to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to check out all the great content at huntstand.com.